We want to give a big shout out to our friends at Stryker for sponsoring this video. I just visited their global headquarters in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and wow, this leading medical manufacturer has state-of-the-art workplaces, provides top pay, and even has a housing stipend for their interns. Learn more about how Stryker supports their employees who are in first by going to careers.stryker.com forward slash first. We're going to get back to some more questions for 118. So our next question is about how you guys approach kickoff and kind of the start of build season every year. Um, and how do you guys kind of, you know, analyze the game and how do you approach, uh, you know, what robot you're going to build and what you think kind of makes you have more successful seasons uh, than most other teams out there? Yeah, so I've got a couple just general comments and then they're going to talk about our process in detail. But um, I want to emphasize, uh, read the rules, read the rules, read the rules. Like we spend hours on the first day you're just reading the rules um you can't really tackle the game without understanding uh it in depth so you want to jump to figuring out that cool ball mechanism but um take the time figure out the rules before you uh to you know jump into the robot uh, aspect um second set your goal for the season um you know for some teams it's to win uh your championship and for some it may just be to play in the tournament at the end of the uh the regional um, and different teams should have different goals. Uh, we all have different resources and capabilities, and um, you know your goal may not be related to the robot whatsoever for the year, and that's fantastic. Um, nevertheless, just identify what you want to do um, and figure out um, you know what the best path is to to get there. So after we read the rules and we understand a basic, we have a really good understanding of them. We break down scoring and we try to understand what's the absolute most important thing. So what are the RPs? Um, what what task is the most important? And how critical is Auton? One of our huge things is to dominate Auton, and um, that's one of our it's one of our values on the Robonauts. So after we break after we break these down, uh, we break down what a robot can do. So not necessarily what our robot will do, but physically what a robot can do. So drive, pick up balls, anything like that. Sco like this year, it'd be like score under the tunnel or score into the low goal. Um, and so we focus what they can do, not necessarily how. So after that, um, our can list kind of drives our will list. So the will list is specific to the robonauts. So whatever our ro we believe that our robot will do, um, we have we create a whole list of um, what it will, and you can you can see that there, <laughs> and we put it on a board, and those are our goals, and we will meet those goals for the season. And of course, we can we change them sometimes, and they're not 100% set in stone, but for the most part, that's what we will do for the season. And yeah, it's a, it's yeah. So yeah. especially. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so adding on to what Casey said. Um, a big part of like after we have that robot can list, that robot will list, is we have a prototyping list. So for each task, there are different ways to get there. So we have a prototyping list and students, they're not required to work on any specific one. It's just whatever idea they feel passionate about, they're encouraged to pursue that. And so like maybe you delayed putting driving under the tunnel on your will list because you don't know how shooting low will turn out, but you use prototyping to figure that out. And once you have the results, you adjust your requirements. And we always believe that prototyping is the one of one of the most important things that we do every year that makes us successful. We dedicate like two or more weeks to prototyping just so we can hammer out those concepts and get like a fully functional robot, like conceptualized. And even when we find a solution, we always try to make sure that there's a better one. So, so maybe to try to expand on that, like he, like Tyler had the list up uh, there a little bit ago. And just like, how, so how do you guys go about, you know, making some of the tough decisions on saying we're gonna, we're gonna decide to leave something off of that we will list versus the like we can list, and and you know how often and, and kind of does the team make the decision as a whole or who's making those final decisions? So um, our team, especially when deciding on the robot, we have we have to have a completely unanimous decision. It has to be the whole team agrees. And we sit there, we sit there, we'll sometimes sit there two hours, two, three hours deciding like exactly what we're going to do. And if one, even if one person doesn't agree, the whole, someone has to convince them or we don't move on. I think it's a really, really fun aspect of our team. It, it, brutal as it may be sometimes, mm -hmm. um, you, you, you get to see the students have these really eloquent, um, you know, reasoning behind why they should or shouldn't do these things on the robot and you get to see that kind of come out it's 
it's kind of comical sometimes the, the the excuses that they'll come up with for some of the reasons they want to do something or, or don't want to do something. Um, but I think it's a really, really awesome experience that they get to uh, kind of hone their debate skills a little bit and uh, and at the end have a have a unanimous decision that the team supports. Yeah. And that's like really, like we said earlier, important to like making actions as a team as a whole so that no one like in the future is like, oh, I, I knew we should have done this. Like I said, we should have done this. Everyone is on the same page. The Robonauts have like a robonaut goal and everyone works on it that's awesome a lot of good unity do you i mean do you guys ever have it where you you know there's never there's a just a permanent divide and people just can't come to a conclusion or do you, people just decide you know i'm gonna i'm gonna back down on this one robot name yeah i was gonna say the robot, robot name yeah. <laughs> the robot <laughs> name's always the worst <laughs> the worst civil wars are always over robot names and it's actually funny because in the past history of our team when our robots it's been like down between like two contenders and the one just comes out of nowhere and takes yeah. it away. The third, the third name has to come out. Like ruckus, to, to... illusion. <laughs> Those were never the final two. Yeah. Yeah. What? Can you guys tease the name this year? Oh, Case we... in point, we don't have it yet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. It's a work in progress. Yeah. Stay tuned. All right. Uh, and so, so moving on. So then, once you guys have that robot, um, and we kind of get to the events, then how do you guys? This is always, you know, a hot topic. A lot of people do a lot of different ways. Um, how do you guys kind of deal with scouting at events and how do you utilize that information that you're gathering by scouting? Yeah. So at competitions, the Robonauts believe in what we have the three pillars of success, which is robot strategy and execution. Execution depends on you and your ability to execute your job at competition. And so we always say that scouting is the foundation of our strategy. Robot and execution, it's an important part of it, but it's definitely not all of it. Scouting is a huge part of it. And in the past, admittedly, um, scouting has like been a little bit neglected. Like not everyone wants to do like menial data collection, but over time and over these past years, we've really like cultivated a different culture of prioritizing scouting. And like we mentioned earlier, we have leadership within scouting, our scouting captains, and they're just as respected as our chief engineer or our team captain. And all of our strategy is based on a lot of rigorous data collection. And another part of it is like at the end of like competitions, we have our scouting meetings and everyone is invited to participate. So for right before matches, we have our pre-match sheets. And the, this is what the drivers and our strategy coaches use for that match. So we don't have, we never really have a set strategy that we're going for. We have, we have a lot of data that's been collected that kind of fuels our decision, uh, th that decision in what we're going to do for that specific match. Um, so whatever it may be, the, whatever it may be, but the matches are never perfect. They're never going to be, they're never going to be a hundred percent every time. So we always have to plan for that, um, that little screw up or that little, whatever happens, you know? Yeah, sure. So, so maybe just elaborate a little bit, like you know, maybe as an example, you know, what kind of data would you guys be looking at this year to collect, and kind of how would it be directly influencing, you know, maybe some match strategy and how your guys are going to approach working with your partners and and how you're going to attack a match. Um, a big part of it usually is scoring. So we not only like take note of like how much a robot scores, but we also keep track of cycle times, like how quick they can do it. So that definitely plays into discerning between our first pick and our second pick we look for certain qualities if one like robot specializes in like one aspect we want to make sure that this other robot can like make up for that in some way yeah. okay yeah yeah to, to kind of add on to that um we're, we're lucky enough to have a lot of students on our team compared to a lot of other other teams so we get to take a lot of um data that other teams can't so for instance um usually there's there's two people assigned to watch mm -hmm. one robot at a time so um, we even get sometimes scribbles of uh, what, you know, exactly where their autonomous drove that match. That way, um, you know, in our planning, we can know um, maybe that robot wants to start where we usually start our auton. So that's a good talking point yeah. to go over during the, the match strategy. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I know the flight crew, like, year after year has really complimented the scouting team on the, the quality of the data that they produce out of the stands. Um, and, and these pre-match sheets, I mean, I mean, they pour over all the data. It's, it's crazy watching them between matches because they, mm -hmm. they come off of a match, they, they talk for a few minutes about you know, how that went, and uh, they get new sheets from the stands, and it's, it's on to the next match. They're pouring over the data, trying to figure out how to, how to 
how to make that alliance really work out for that that upcoming match. It's 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 kind of fascinating to watch. And then, so that kind of covers how you guys use your scouting data for, you know, a given match. But then how do you guys kind of utilize it when it comes to alliance selection? And how do you guys approach that process? So our pick list is a huge accumulation of all of that data, that constant influx of data. We, at the end of, at the end of our day, we, everyone comes together, our scouters come together and they, um, we sort through all that data and sometimes it takes hours and hours, but, um, once that data has been sorted through and everyone agrees on our pick list, that's what we go. That's what we go from. Yeah. So we have specific tasks that we like decide are stuff that we like necessarily want to look for. Like for example, in 2019, defense became a significant aspect of like who we picked for our robots. So it sometimes changes every year, but we mainly go about like those actions that robots can accomplish. All right. And then uh, our final question before we move into some of our community submitted questions, um, what would you guys attribute most to your team having so much su consistency in your success over the years and, and being able to execute at a high level every season? Um, so I would probably say that we are generally really passionate about robotics as a whole, but we trust our process. The robot, we just, we trust it. Um, this year is kind of a pretty good example of that. We generally followed our process but we missed some of our deadlines some of our, our important minor parts that we wanted to integrate you know stuff like that and it's really it kind of really shows how important that is but we we really try to look forward to look look towards the future stay positive and we also focus on those those three pillars that um esther as esther mentioned earlier robot strategy and execution you can't have you can't have an amazing robot, but your strategy and execution fall short. You won't have success. And that's what we really try to pride ourselves on and remember throughout the season. We have to remember that our robot is not the only piece of our full equation. And it won't, our a perfect robot won't ensure us 100% success. So we also have a set of guiding principles for the team each year, not only for like our team structure, but for our robot, for example, a common one that we rely on every year is low CG. We don't want to tip in a match and ownership, which kind of applies in different ways. Ownership as in like, we want to like dominate the competition, but also like within our team, we want to take ownership of different responsibilities and tasks. And another one that we always say is world-class. The Robonauts want to be world-class. And because of our history and just like track record as a team, the pressure is kind of like on the students to maintain that. And we always have the expectation like the things that we have to make, the things that we put on our robot, the things that we execute have to be world-class. They have to be at a level that can play on Einstein, that can win on Einstein. That is always the goal. Just to add real quick to jump in. So a, a lot of times we get a lot of questions during the uh, reveal videos about these black boards around the, the, the field here. Those are those guiding principles that, mm -hmm. that Esther's talking about. So yeah. uh, reminding us every day, you know, they're right there in our face, just, just to kind of ingrain it into our brain. Um, those those guiding yeah. principles of a team. Um, another important part of our team, like we said earlier, is our parents, our family, our booster club is amazing. All the things that they do for the students and for the mentors, we just appreciate so much. They feed and us. They feed us. They feed food. us. They give us food. I, I can attest, <laughs> feeding, feeding mentors is very <laughs> beneficial for uh, good, good mentor retention. <laughs> and lastly, like we said before, we have three guiding principles for competition, but we also have it for our season in general, and that's family, school, robot, in that order. We always, always, always prioritize your family and schoolwork before anything else. If you are busy with homework, then you come to practice, you do homework. If like something happened with your family, go to them first. Or even if you're not feeling well, your health just isn't the best or you're overwhelmed, go home. You are a part of our Robonauts family. You are always more important than your work. And health doesn't only mean your physical health. We put a big emphasis on mental health on this team. It's something that we pride ourselves on to make sure our students and our mentors and everyone for involved sure. in the team is mentally, is mentally okay and mentally healthy. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.